Sure. Well, today I want to prophesy and talk about divine help, destiny helpers, and how to recognize and discern if somebody is a drainer versus a helper. So we're going to get into this today. Amen. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you that every single person who's been connected to this broadcast live and on the replay, that there's a divine lifting, there's a help, a raising, that there is helpers on the way. And in this season where there's great shaking and exposure, Father, I thank you that you are exposing the drainers, the drainers and the leeches, the ones who are secretly antagonizing against your downfall, are being exposed and are being broken off of your inner circle. And every soul tie and every attachment is being broken off in the mighty name of Jesus. So come with the fire of God. Let the power of God come forth in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Good to see you, Patricia Jansen. I'm so happy my South Africa family is very strong today. M. John, good to see you. Good to see you, Jason. Aloha. Good to see you, Jesus. Bless you. Well, friends, listen. Whenever God begins to upgrade you, he always changes your inner circle. I've taught this many times and I've said this many times. That you're a, the anointing on your life will change your association. The anointing changes your association. So many times whenever you go up to a higher level or you're about to be promoted or be upgraded, there's always a shaking in your inner circle. All right. People can either choose to upgrade with you and to upgrade with them themselves, or they could remain where they are at the same level. Uh, unfortunately, many people do not want to pay the price or go to the next level. They want to be comfortable. So what do they do? They continue to drain and delay instead of help and instead of bless. And of course, we're called to love all people. But did you know you can love them from a distance? Did you know, yes, you can love them, but you also need to love what God has spoken over your life, which means that you need to be faithful to your assignment. You need to be faithful to the inner circle, to the atmosphere. If it costs you your peace, then it costs you too much. And some people are leeches and drainers and they secretly delay because they're always complaining. They're always nagging. They're proud. They don't take correction. They don't listen to you. Uh, however, this is a season where God is about to accelerate you. And I sense in my spirit so strong that God is about to send destiny helpers. Now, why is this so important? Because even when a woman a biological female woman gives birth. Uh, she needs helpers because it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a group to birth a child. And some of you are on the brink of birthing, some powerful, large, and some supernatural. And whenever you are birthing, you need to be very aware and selective. Some say selective. You need to be very aware and selective with who is in that room. Because some people are just monitoring. They're spying. They're operating out of spying, monitoring spirits. Some people are acting because a lot of Christians are false actors. They're so-called actors. And some people uh, are just acting like they love you, but they're secretly Jezebels. So once they get what they want, then they will try to discredit you, defame you, slide your name down the mud, and destroy and Jezebelically divide your ministry and the work and all that God has done for your life. But I want to prophesy because help is on the way. And even this morning, I got a testimony from one of our church members. And this woman of God, she is a CEO. She has her own business. And she told me, Pastor Ben, two Sundays ago, you prophesied. The help is on the way. And she began to cry out to the Lord with that word. And as she cried out to the Lord, the Lord sent her exactly what she needed. Now, are you ready for a miracle connection? Are you ready for a divine appointment? Because many times before, hear me now, before you get your divine appointment, you must go through some shaking. Before you receive your divine appointment, before you receive your sudden blessing, your sudden impartation, you must go through some shaking because the Lord wants you to be faithful and to love him more than the blessing of the breakthrough itself.
So we're in a season right now where God is releasing help, even angelic assistance. My goodness, I feel the angelic so strong right now. Angels are being released to you, my friends. I'm telling you, certain things you've been waiting on are about to suddenly come to pass. Things you've been waiting on, things you've been uh, praying for, they're going to suddenly come to pass. Because this is a season of suddenly. Remember, we are in the counting of the Omer right now. And as we are in the counting of the Omer, in the upper room, suddenly the fire of God fell. Suddenly, someone say suddenly. Suddenly, the promise of the Father came upon the right group of 120. There was 500 people there initially, and then it decreased or shifted down to three, uh, 380 left, and it went down to 120. Who here knows that small is not always bad? Amen. He loves the small things. In fact, the Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. And sometimes you need to shrink or you need to go back or you need to retract. You need to lose some baggage in order for the increase and the fire and the promise of God to come upon your life. Amen. So we are in the days of the counting of the Omer and the counting of the Omer, otherwise known as the countdown to harvest. Someone say countdown. What it is, is you're counting your blessings. You're counting your harvest. You're counting what's in your basket, what's in your bosom, what's in your bank account. You are accounting what is in your hands, in your heart, in your possession. Um, so right now we're in a season where angelic assistance is being released. And help is on the way, my friends. Help is on the way. So I want to prophesy because we're in a season where God is divinely orchestrating some movement. I want you to comment movement. There's divine movement taking place. And some of you, you've been crying out for help. She cut up for assistance. You've been crying out uh, for these mountains to be moved, but suddenly these mountains are going to be moved. Financial mountains, uh, physical mountains, mountains of organization, mountains. Things are shifting. And things are moving. So if you're with me today, I want you to say amen. Because I'm going to begin to prophesy and release the word of the Lord that God has given me to release over you. Because we are in a season where delay is being broken. And God is sending you helpers. God is sending you the right people. All right, I want you to hashtag by Felicia. Because we're in a season where God is exposing the weak, the so-called false prophets, and God is exposing those actors that claim they're in your camp and for your blessing, for your benefit, but they're not. Some would say exposure. So right now, I thank you for the spirit of delay as being broken. And I release the fire of God upon every single person that destiny helpers, donors, financiers, supporters are coming. Intercessors are coming. Help is on the way. And even in the next few weeks, hear me now, says God. Get ready for knocks on your door. Get ready for inboxes, for DMs. Get ready for inquiries. Even in the next few months, all the way up to Pentecost Sunday, you are going to begin to connect, network, meet uh, with fellowship, with many new connections that are for the next season and for the greater and the higher upgrade. If you receive it, I want you to say amen. Now, I, I want to release uh, this verse here, amen. This is uh, the main verse that I, I want to begin to minister out of. And of course, you know, we love the word of God. We love the Bible. And I believe with every prophetic rainbow word, and my hair is crazy. This is my morning hair. <laughs> but I believe with every word, there must be a word from the Bible, a word from scripture to back it up. But here, I want you to go over to 2 Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 11, 2 Timothy 4, 11. This is Apostle Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. And he says, Luke is alone with me. Get Mark and bring him with you. For he is very useful, helpful to me for ministry. I'm going to read that again. Luke is alone with me, Timothy. Get Mark and bring him with you. For he is very useful to me for ministry. I want you to say amen. For he's very useful. So here's Apostle Paul. Hear me now. Apostle Paul, number one, he's admitting he needs help. 
You are never too high to, and please don't ever be on a pedestal. Because the higher your pedestal, the inflated ego and the bubble and the balloon of you can do it yourself. That inflated balloon will pop any day now. Pop goes the weasel. So number one, apostle, the apostle of apostles, the apostle who wrote half of the New Testament. The apostle who was ordained into the apostleship by divine revelation by Jesus Christ. The apostle who uh, moved in signs and wonders. That apostle, Apostle Paul, number one, he admits he needs help. He confesses, I need help. Come on, somebody. You are never too anointed, too grown, too big, too famous, too influential, too powerful to need help. And we understand the reason why David as king and his kingdom grew into the golden era, the golden age, was because he had David's mighty men. In fact, all throughout the passage, uh, you see historical uh, context and historical accounting that, uh, that David and his mighty men, and we also see scores, meaning we see uh, the order of mighty men that were in his myriad of military. So we see David's mighty men. So David, King David, he had a mighty men to help him. Amen. And I love the stories because it begins to connotate and expound and storytell about the stories, the testimonies of David's mighty men. So number one, we see Apostle Paul says, I need help. Amen. I need help. So number one, you need to recognize, confess when you need help. You need to reach out for help. Some of you, you are isolated, you're alone as an island, uh, you're, you're being bombarded by temptuous thoughts, by Satan, by lies, by depression, and you need to reach out for help. Reach out to an intercessor, reach out to a man, woman, God, to your pastor, to your apostle, to your prophet. Reach out and watch what God does for you. Amen. Number two, the second thing we can pull out from this one scripture or this one example is Apostle Paul identifies who he specifically wants help from. Okay, do not be ashamed for selecting your people. I, I love Jesus because Yeshua, he is the one who selects his disciples. He says, come to me. The disciples did not choose him. Jesus chose his disciples. He said, come to me. And he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus was selective and so was Apostle Paul. So Apostle Paul was selective and he knew the type of help that he needed. Amen. He knew. So what does that mean? It bears witness with your spirit. It causes the baby in your spirit, man, to leap. Uh, there's an iron sharpening iron. There's a history. There is a, a fruit. There is a history. There is a fruit. There is a good report, a good report. Because you flowed with them, because you've had experience, because uh, maybe you connected with them. So therefore, you can trust in that person being helpful. Amen. So you must be selective, especially in this hour. You must be even more selective. And here's the thing. A lot of us, especially in church, we choose people to fill a position because there's a vacancy or there's an opening. You do not choose people to just fill a vacant position or an opportunity. What you do is they must be anointed for that position. They must be anointed for that grace work, for that work, for that move of God. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. So number one, Apostle Paul admitted and confessed he need help. Number two, Apostle Paul was selective. He was very selective with who was around him, very selective with who was in his corner, very selective with who was speaking into his ear. Do you have demons whispering to you? Do you have uh, Jezebel's manipulating, contorting, distorting information, holding back information? Do you have people surrounding you that are only telling you what you want to hear? Uh-uh-uh, listen, we don't need the flattery and the itching of ears. What we need is God's word to speak loud and clear. Can I get an amen? So you must be very selective with who ministers to you, lays hands on your children, prays for you, prays over you. Because one, one more time, people can pray for you or they can pray on you. P-R-E-Y. 
they can prey on you like a spiritual predator. And a number of years ago, the Lord gave me a word about prophetic predators. Because there's a lot of people who prophesy and minister to get in your purse or to get in your pants. And sorry if that sounds too graphic, but many people will prophesy or prophesy, use the gifts of the Spirit for their manipulated personal self-agenda gain for their own benefit, not for the work of God and not for the edification of God's people. So there's exposure in the mighty name of Jesus. So number one, he confessed. Number two, Apostle Paul was selective. And then number three, Apostle Paul sends for him and gets him over here. So here, here's the thing. Many, many of you, you need to do whatever it takes to get the right people. Do whatever it takes. Apostle Paul says, get Mark and bring him with you. Whatever you can do, whatever you need to do, don't make any excuses. However much we need to pay to cover the airfare, to get the bus, to get the car, whatever we need to do, we need to get that person on our team. Isn't it incredible? Basketball, football, baseball, they will pay millions to get one person on their team. Millions so that one person will be drafted into their team. Come on, somebody. Whatever you need to do, we got to get this person. Whatever we need to do, shika rabata, it's worth it. It's costly and it's valuable, but it's going to cost us more if we do not have the right person in our corner. Somebody say help is on the way. So number three. Here, Apostle Paul does whatever he needs to do to get the right person. And then number four, it's useful. Now, that word useful, all right, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, that word youth, uh, useful, excuse me, it means to be serviceable and very profitable. Amen. To be very profitable. Now, listen, some people are, some people are not profitable. What does that mean? That means that they're expensive. All they do is they fill up a seat. All they do is they suck the air out of you. They, they suck the air condition out of you. All they do is, is complain and fill up a seat. They're not bringing profit. Jesus. That word useful in the Greek is eucrestitos. Eucrestos. Okay. I want to say that. Eucrestos. You crestos. That word in the Greek useful is you crestos. And what that word means, it's, it's useful and it's profitable. Now, how many of you like to cook at home? How many of you like to cook? Listen, I, I like cooking. I love grilling, especially, you know me. I love my steaks. I love grilling. Uh, I'm almost a grill master. I consider myself, wink, wink, a grill master. But remember, when you start cutting your steak or you start cutting your food and the blade or the teeth is dull, don't you hate it when you're cutting something, fruits or meat, and the teeth is dull? You cannot cut through. It is a dull knife. Now, that's not a useful knife. That's a knife you either need to sharpen or you need to throw away because it's too old now. You know what I'm saying? But there are some knives that are useful, that are profitable, that are able to get the job done, its purpose. It's able to get the job and the purpose done, all right? It's not going to delay. It's not going to, you don't need to ask questions. You don't need to try to sharpen it. All right, so a knife is Eucristos, useful, serviceable, and very profitable. Are you ready for the very profitable anointing. I want to prophesy over you that God is going to send you people that's going to add value to you, that's going to help you, and is going to add profit to your life, to your business, and to your ministry. If you receive it today, say amen. God is going to send you people that's going to be very profitable, um, even for universities and colleges. Universities and colleges, there are... Um, uh, with, within the, uh, the board or within even the staff of teachers, uh, I forget what the right word is, uh, within the staff of teachers, the more degrees these people have, the more valuable 
the college and the university the school is. So the more degrees, the more schol uh, a scholared, uh, degree, cr uh, credified, uh, credentialed people there are at the school, the more valuable the school becomes. Does that make sense to you? So God is saying, I'm bringing profit and value to your life. People who are able, people who are gifted, people who are willing, people who have experience and gifts and anointings and are ready to serve and ready to be put to use. Once again, let's go back to the verse here. Second Timothy chapter 411, Luke alone is with me. Apostle Paul realizes it's not good for a man to be alone. It's not good for him to be alone just with Luke. He needs more help. And the greater the work, the more help you need. The greater the glory, the more priests you need. The greater the harvest, the more harvesters you need to expand and to hold the net. Amen. A lot of people want to do big and great things, but then you're going to need more staff. You're going to need more help. You're going to need more of the right people to increase, to fill those positions, to take things to the next level. There's a common saying, and a common saying goes like this. The kingdom moves at the speed of relationships. I'm going to say that again. The kingdom moves at the speed of relationships. And that's why the enemy works so hard to sabotage people's minds, to sabotage and to destroy relationships, to cause envy and jealousy to manifest, insecurity and Jezebel spirits to manifest, because the enemy is concerned with stopping and halting the work of God. But I declare over you, just like Nehemiah had the strategy, just like Nehemiah had the papers, just like Nehemiah had the right people around him to build the walls and to finish the work, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, whatever he began, he will bring it to completion. No more delay, no more sabotage, no more questioning yourself, but there's a wind and a breath of God that's coming over you to uplift and to help and to get you in your kingdom movement and advancement so that you can move forward like never before. Mountains are moving. Things are moving in your life. Even as the tomb was rolled away from the grave, from the tomb of Jesus, the stone was rolled away. Are you ready for Jesus to roll the stone away? Every blocking door, every closed door, every blood clot, every kidney stone, whatever blockage is in your blood or in your body, it's going to be moved and removed in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, say amen. Give the Lord Almighty a mighty shout and give us some hearts and likes. Once again, Apostle Paul, he needed Barnabas to go to the next level. Apostle Paul, uh, needed the man to come to him and to open his eyes. What is his name again? It's not Ananias. Sharabababa. Shikarabatarababa sotorabata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord sends a man to open the eyes of Paul. Hallelujah. So God knows how to strategically send you the right people in the journey of life. It was Ananias. God knows how to strategically send the right people in every step of your journey to send the right people to encourage you, to water the seeds of destiny, to help breathe life, to be a covering. Like many of you right now, you're connected to this broadcast. You're connected to this prophetic anointing. I am here to help edify, encourage, and to exhort you and your family. Me, as a man of God, I'm here to serve because who knows every gift gift and every prophetic grace is here to serve, to help steward, to help spark, to help release a fire on your fire, to help release gasolina and petroleum oil on your fire so that you will go from a little bonfire to become a great fire over a region. Somebody shout fire. Every gift and grace is here to serve. And here, Apostle Paul needed Ananias to open his eyes. Apostle Paul needed Barnabas. And even here, you see 2 Timothy 4.11. He's not too ashamed to reach out for help. Not too ashamed to cry out. 
to say, bring this person. I'm selective because he's useful. He's Eucrastos for my ministry. I feel the Lord. He's serviceable, very profitable. He brings value, adds value, adds profit to my life. Amen. So I want to pray for you right now because God is bringing kingdom connections. He is bringing supporters out of the woodworks, people you never would have thought. Like I said earlier, get ready for phone calls, for inboxes, for emails, inquiries, DMs. Get ready for knocks on the door because people are going to suddenly come to your aid with no motive, with no false agenda, with no hidden pretexts. But they're going to come wanting to help you because they're being obedient to Jesus, because it is an assignment and it is an alignment and the mighty name of Jesus. Do you have a Barnabas in your life? And here Apostle Paul says, get Mark and bring him with you for he is very useful to me for ministry. Very useful to me for ministry. Are you surrounding yourself with people who know how to amplify and increase the atmosphere of God? Or are there people that have been sent by Satan to block the move of God, to infiltrate to contest, to distract, to release witchcraft. Amen. God is exposing. And the Bible says, know those who labor amongst you. The Bible also says, you must know the condition of your flock. <clears throat> Every shepherd must know. If you are a leader, a shepherd over a sphere or over a realm, you must know the condition of your flock. You must know those who labor amongst you. Someone say amen. So listen, I want to prophesy. My goodness. I want to prophesy these seven things over your life. If you're with me today, say amen. I want to prophesy because I feel movement. I feel alignment and help is on the way. I want you to say help is on the way. Number one, God is bringing and aligning people together. There is a divine alignment and a gathering anointing. The gift, the grace to gather, to harvest. So number one, God is bringing and aligning people together. So there is a new synergy. There are new circles. There are new alignments, new networks, new groups, new relationships, new friendships, new prayer partners, new financial partners, new donors. brota. God is bringing and aligning the right people together. Number two, there is prayers that are being answered. I declare not a decree that prayers are being answered. We're in a season right now where God is answering prayers with swiftness, with quickness, and with acceleration. Amen. Prayers are being answered. You've been crying out. You've been praying. You've been knocking on doors. You've been knocking on the door of the Lord. God is about to suddenly open doors and he is going to answer your prayers. So get ready for prayers to be answered. Amen. You've been asking for wisdom. You've been asking for a way out. You've been even, my goodness, I mean, I don't want to share too much, but prayers are being answered, my friends, even in my own life. Amen. It's happening instantly and immediately just like that. I want you to snap your fingers, bam, there is prayers being answered swiftly and quickly with acceleration and might. Number three, finances are being poured out. Finances are being poured out. Many of you, you are about to increase financially. Even in the season of the counting of the Omer, this is a harvest festival. This is a harvest season. Someone say harvest. So I believe there are new donors, new financial uh, partners, new financiers, new streams of finances and income, financial breakthrough, financial provision. There is new financial provision being poured out. This is a season of harvest for the harvest of souls, for the next season of increase and breakthrough. So number three, I believe God is releasing financial increase in your life. If you receive it now, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Number three, or number four, excuse me. Number four, there are new anointings, gifts, and help that is being provided. Did you know that the helps gift 
the gift of service. It's one of the supernatural gifts of the, of the gifts of God in 1 Corinthians 12. The gift, the ministry of helps, of helpers. These are armor bearers or these are handmaidens. I want to say armor bearers or handmaidens. These are people that are acute and in the known of the man and the woman of God. They attend to the personal issues and to the personal matters of the man and woman of God, of the king and of the queen. But there are new, uh, there is a new provision of anointings, graces, gifts, and helps that is on the way. Something you needed is coming. Something you needed is coming. You knew you hit a wall. You knew that there was a limitation. You knew that's not in your gifting. But there's a new anointing, a new supply of gifts, graces. Listen, you're going to be surrounded. I want you to hear this. You are going to be surrounded with people who do things better than you do. Listen, I'm not the greatest administrator. I'm not the greatest accountant, okay? I'm a visionary. I'm a miracle worker. I'm a CEO. I'm an influencer, all right? But God is going to bring you people who are better at doing things than you are. And that's okay because you need to be surrounded with people who are better at things than you are. You can't do everything. Amen. And that is the beauty of the body of Christ. If I'm a finger, I can't be the toe. If I'm an eye, I can't be the ear. So God is sending you people who have greater giftings, anointings, gifts, graces. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Number five, there is delay that's being broken. The spirit of delay and sabotage is being broken off of your life. All right. Some of you, you felt weary. You felt leery. You felt depressed. You felt so much opposition and heaviness and witchcraft. You, you wanted to give up. You wanted to throw in the towel. All right. You were in this weird funk. You were in this weird spiritual, emotional, mental state. But the fire of God is coming upon you. And the spirit of the Lord says, delay and sabotage is being broken. The spirit of delay and sabotage. Now, what is delay? Here's the thing, friends. If God gives you a prophetic word, he absolutely wants you to partner with that word to bring it to pass. Why does he want? All right, he doesn't just, all right, you received a prophetic word. Does that mean that you just go home and be lazy and play video games and eat pizza all day? No, it means you partner and you warfare with that word and you do what you need to do on earth so that the heavens are poured out over your life. But you see a lot of people, all they do is pray rather than partner. Come on, somebody. Faith without works is action. Faith without works is action. And why do you need to partner and why do you need to faith into these words, invest into these words? Why? Because there's warfare against them. There's a spirit of sabotage and the enemy does not want to see these words come to pass. So he will conjure up people against you. He will release false words, accusation, defamation, assassination of character against you. The enemy is terrified and mortified about your increase, and about those powerful prophetic words coming to pass. Someone say amen. So God is breaking off the spirit of delay and sabotage. And I want to prophesy over you. Some of you, you've been waiting for a deal to go through, for contracts to be signed. I see papers on the table right now. I see contracts being signed. My goodness. I see projects coming to pass. My goodness, even for myself, listen, guys, even for myself, I'm working on uh, two new albums here in the U.S. and one new album in Korea. So when I go to Korea in a few weeks, I'm going to rec record an album in Korea. And even in Korea, we just published two of my books into the Korean language, published. And here in the U.S., of course, with Chosen Baker Publishing, I'm working on my newest book that will be released next year. Uh, called The Lost Art of Honor. And right after that, probably this month in the month of June, I'm going to work on my latest book, which will be released at the end of this year. Amen. 
something like the prophetic edge or whatnot, but who knows? Because I got books on the inside of me. Someone say amen. So projects are coming to pass. Destiny scrolls are opening and unraveling. And the Lord is opening and he is unraveling. Shikarabata. And the anointing of God is breaking that spirit, the op opposition, the wall, the hesitation, the resistance of delay and sabotage. And every word will come to pass. So delay is being broken. If you receive it, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Number six, the sixth thing I want to prophesy is divine movement and activation. There is divine movement and activation, even as we're now in the spring season. You're about to spring forth. Do you not perceive it? For I'm doing a new thing. For it springs from a distance. Do you not perceive it? Do you not discern it? There are new things springing up, new life. There are shoots and branches that are shooting forth and expanding on every side and direction, north, east, south, and west. So there's divine movement and activation. I want you to write that. Divine movement is taking place in my life. The mountains are being moved. The boulders, the rocks, the stones are being moved. Amen. And the stones that they threw at you, you will use those stones to turn it into an altar. You are going to use those stones to turn it into an altar. You're going to use that hate and that jealousy, and it's going to be fuel for your fire, for vindication and vengeance belongs to the Lord, says God. Those things that they threw and spew against you, you will return it for good. For all that the enemy intended for evil, God will turn it for good. Some will say, turn around. Are you ready for divine turnaround? Amen. Number one, God is bringing and aligning people together. Number two, prayers are being answered. Number three, financial increase is being poured out. Number four, new supply and provision of help, gifts, and anointings. Number five, the spirit of sabotage and delay is being broken. Number six, there is divine movement and activation taking place in your life. And number seven, the drainers and leeches are being exposed. Number seven, friends, drainers, hidden monitoring spirits and leeches, users and abusers, the nagging complainers are being exposed. Amen. Shatarabata, don't be surprised when people who praised you in the last season will suddenly try to Jezebelically come against you in this season. Do not be surprised if people who allegedly were for you in the last season suddenly turn against you. And not only do they turn against you, but they're trying to be you. They're wannabes, they're watchabes, they're wallabies. They're trying to be you. They try to be you, but they cannot mock nor mimic the anointing of God. They cannot mock nor mimic the anointing of God. Number four is new supply and provision of help and gifts and anointings. If you receive this today, say amen. Because like Apostle Paul, my goodness, like Apostle Paul prayed, he said, get Mark and bring him with you. For he is very useful for me in ministry. Are you ready to be surrounded by people who are useful, who are profitable, who are valuable, who are supporting? And listen, it doesn't mean, come on somebody, it doesn't mean you should ignore uh, the least of these. No, not at all. It just means that you must surround yourself in your inner circle, in your 12, in your three, and in your one. You must surround yourself with people who know how to carry the grace and the glory of God to help you to go to the next level, to upgrade you and your ministry, your business, your personal destiny. Amen. And this is not a matter of being selfish. This is a matter of being a good steward. Because what worked yesterday will not work today. What was permissible in the last season has now become 
has now become inexcusable in this season. What was permissible in the last season is now a hindrance in this season. My goodness, I feel like I shared so many tweetable quotes today. Are you with me today? Are you with me? And there is an upgrade, a supernatural increase that's coming upon your life. And whenever God increases you and raises you up, he changes your surroundings, your circles, and your cliques. Somebody say, I receive in Jesus' mighty name. Apostle Paul says, get Mark and bring him with you. He was selective because he knew the blessing, the benefit that Mark would be for him in the ministry. Surround yourself with people who know to increase and amplify the anointing. Surround yourself with people who bring value, credibility, not people who stain or drain or taint the move of God. Surround yourself with people who are willing to do whatever it takes. I love the story of David, and I'm going to end with this. If you're with me today, say amen. Shita Rabba Kirerosata. Here, in 2 Samuel chapter 23, David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So, that, so the three mighty men broke into the Philistine lines, drew water from the well, near the gates of Bethlehem and carried it back to David. Now we know the story. David was famished. He was crying out and he said something. Hear me now. David said something and three mighty men. It says the three. So they were recognized as the three main helpers, the three main armor bearers for David. And what did they do? They broke into the enemy's camp. Second Samuel chapter 23. They broke into the enemy's camp and got him a cup of water. We know the story. David says, are you kidding me? I was just joking. I was just playing. So he poured the water out because he did not want to risk the lives of his helpers. You need to surround yourself with people that when you say something, they go the extra mile. When you say jump, they ask you how high. When you say, give me a tunic, they say, how many? They do not question your authority. They do not question your motive. Even when David was sarcastic, his disciples, his mighty men took it seriously. Because whatever they can do for the man, woman, and God, whatever they can do to serve, to be useful, to be profitable for their king, for their man and woman of God, whatever it takes, let's do it. Because we love and we honor and we're willing to lay down our lives to do the best, to give the best, to be the best. Because we're so grateful for what God's doing. Friends, help is on the way. Divine help is on the way. Financial increase and support is on the way. If you receive this, I want to say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. Lift up your hands. And I want to prophesy and pray over you. God, I thank you for the fire of God that is upon this broadcast. And Lord, I thank you that you are answering the desires and the prayers of your people. Shita Rabba, Lord, I thank you. There it is. I want you to pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Jarabambarabrata. Thank you, Lord. Siravabrosato. Shu. Manderes Corabrata. Thank you, Jesus. King Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And don't be afraid to let go. Don't be afraid to let go, my friends. Jerabande Kerabrosa. Don't be afraid to let go. Because there is a shaking and an exposure. And it's for your blessing and your benefit and your breakthrough. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Jacaraba sitararosata. Zitaraman de carabrata. Help is on the way. And that's why pastors and ministers, we need the help of apostles and prophets. 
the help of traveling itinerant ministers because they will bring things to that region that will help complete or fulfill the work of God. That's why you need to surround yourself with diverse gifts because some people have expired. Some gifts and graces have expired. They're no longer useful. They're no longer profitable. They've reached their limit. They've capped out. They've tapped out. Amen. So God is sending you and he's releasing. And you're going to be connected with many people that are for you. Not faking it, not false friends, not frenemies. But God is going to surround you with people, the right people, who will help the work and take things to the next level. I want you to lift up your hands. If you agree and receive and connect with this word today, I want you to put your hands on the screen. Lord, I thank you. Shoo! As a man of God, I release divine help, the ministry of help, angelic assistance, and I prophesy help is on the way. The Lord is sending helpers, supporters, donors, and financiers to help be a covering, to help comfort, and to help connect. And Lord, I thank you right now that you are sending help. I prophesy help is coming from the most unusual places. Breakthrough and blessing is coming from the most unusual of places. Outstanding, extraordinary, out of the box, out of the blue, out of your peripheral vision. Help is coming from the most unusual situations and circumstances. In Jesus' name. Come on, lift up your hands. Give us some hearts and likes. Lord, I thank you right now. I declare the spirit of sabotage is being broken right now. Expand your tents and your tent pegs for the harvest is coming. You who are desolate, you will see that many are your sons and many are your daughters. Expand your tent pegs and expand your tents. Let me tell you, um, yesterday, wow, I can't believe it was yesterday, but yesterday, amen, or Monday, somebody sent me a gift, and that gift was personal, it was beautiful, it was not a cheap gift, but that person sent me a gift, and that blessed me, out of the blue, out of the blue. They went out of their way to honor me and to bless me with a personal gift, it wasn't some little trinket from Hobby Lobby. You know what I'm saying? That I have no need of. But it was a special gift. And uh, bless this person. But God knows how to give you exactly what you need. I know. I, it looks weird. Get ready for winks from heaven. God is about to wink his eye at you. And he's get ready for winks from heaven. Gifts, blessings, surprises from the Father. Someone say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sharabarabatata. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. I'm so excited for this new album. We're going to record in Korean in Korea. I'm recording a Korean album in Korea. And my two books just got translated in Korean. Glory to God. 
We must reach more people with the word of God, with the gift that God has given us. Amen. And I prophesy, help is on the way. If you receive it today, I want you to say amen. Listen, friends, tomorrow, someone say tomorrow, our conference, Open Heavens, Power and Glory, begins tomorrow. Listen, friends, it's not too late for you to register. I have posted and pinned the registration link. It's not too late for you to register. Myself, Evangelist John Ramirez, Jake Hamilton, three days of glory in Orange County, California. Drive in, fly in, crawl in, do whatever you need to do to be a part. Like Jake Hamilton said earlier Monday, wow, just this week, he said, get in the room. Whatever you need to do, get in the room. The lame man who was bedridden for years on the mat was paralyzed. His friends opened up a window, an opening in the ceiling, and got the friend in the room. Whatever you need to do, get in the room. Amen. Someone to help is on the way. So friends, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's already here. We have our open heavens, power and glory, a powerful three-day conference. You can register online. Join us online. Worship with us online. It's going to be so powerful. Myself, Evangelist John Ramirez and Jake Hamilton. We still have seats open. We still have VIP opened. Amen. And we have a special VIP session on Friday doing a panel with all three of us. John Ramirez, Jake Hamilton, and myself. That's Friday afternoon only for VIP registrants. It's going to be very powerful. So that's Friday. But friends, I prophesy, help is on the way. And if you received, I want to say amen. Friends, if I'm going to see you online or in person this week for a conference, I want you to say I'm joining or I'm coming. Comment below, I'm joining or I'm coming. Amen. I want to see you. Amen. I want to see you. When you're around giants and generals of the faith, things begin to shift. Our breakthrough becomes your breakthrough. May you be a partaker of my grace, of the grace that's going to be poured out. Prophet Ivana, Rob, Mary. If you're going to join online or come in person, I want you to comment joining or coming. Nadine, amen. Christiana, how wonderful. Please say hello. Toru Pera. And you need to register on the link, my friends. Lucienne. Glory to God. See, see, I have friends that are driving in from all around. Elaine. Hello there, Malia Freeman. Bless you. Amen, Prophetess Chelsea. You'll be blessed, trust me. Apostle Barbeau, Amitha, Pastor Sharon. Amen. Rebe si tarabrata tarabrata. Sherry. Janamande kerabrosa tarabrata tarabrata. Amen. You for sure can. Sakule. Hello there from Joburg. Providence Alana. Jenny Luther. Amen. We'd love to see you in person. Maryland. Now, friends, register. The conference starts tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Amen. And uh, also, next week, I'm going to be in Arizona. So come and see me in Arizona. The week after that, I will be in Pennsylvania again. Week after that, I'll be in Korea for two weeks. So God is good. And after that, the month of June, we have our Route 66 revival. Tent revivals in eight cities. Tent revivals. If you want to join us, join us. Whether for a week, for the whole month, or maybe just for a few days. But Route 66 Revival, amen. You can go to Route66Revival.us. I just commented the website for Route66Revival.us. We're going to go from Chicago to St. Louis, to Kansas City, to Tulsa, 
to Amarillo, to Albuquerque, to Flagstaff, to Los Angeles. Incredible. Thank you, Melanie Hurst. Yes, it is. We're in Arizona, Marie Thompson. I'll be in the Phoenix area. Please just look at my website, benlamglobal.com. Amen. Well, friends, please share this broadcast and consider following me or being a subscriber here on Facebook. Also on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, every platform, we have different type of content that we release. But I love you, bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Help is on the way. Amen. God bless.